FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's January 23rd, 2018. Well, you've got to have seen this wherever you look, wherever, wherever you see things. Millennials run amok. Millennials believing that communism, socialism, Bernie Sanders is better than good old fashioned capitalism. Well, maybe it's because they don't really know what capitalism is. We haven't seen it in the United States. Really pure capitalism got going back to World War I, but that's an issue for another day. Hey, be part of the show, participate. We've got our blockchain Bitcoin report white paper out there for you. Just send an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Give us a day or two, we'll send it right back to you. So what is up with millennials? Uh, were they born stupid? Did they become that way? Is socialism really a viral idea that destroys everything in its path? Well, I'm not sure the answer to that, but here to help us is a young lady by the name of Tudor Dixon, CEO of Lumen Student News and Tudor, your goal is to reach pre-millennials before they've been brainwashed by the system into believing that uh, that your children will live in communism, to paraphrase the words of the late Nikita Khrushchev, who was head of the Soviet Union during Kennedy's time. Anyway, Tudor, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, so, so you're kind of on a mission here to really give, I guess, Generation Z the truth about economics, about freedom, about why it's so important and why it just can't be taken for granted and why, while the appeal of socialism, you know, to each according to his ability, from, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs sounds very appealing. It just doesn't work. So welcome to the show. Appreciate your coming on. Thank you. Yeah, we are on a mission to educate our kids about the country that they live in, that America is exceptional, that capitalism works, and the history behind why this country has, is the way it is, where we came from, how we chose capitalism, and why we are not socialists, and why that doesn't work. We want them to have a, a well-rounded history um, in all areas, but we do. We have already gone through economic systems, and we've talked about socialism and communism and capitalism. It is interesting when we see numbers like this, with 58% of millennials saying, "Oh, let's dump capitalism." They don't know what they're talking about. These are, these are, this is a whole generation of people who love their iPhones. They like to go home at night and watch their Netflix. They like to pick their own cars. They're not realizing you're not doing that in a socialist nation. They don't realize that they love capitalism. Yeah. Well, they don't realize that everything around them, the entire country, it evolved directly from capitalism and earlier in the country's history, free markets. For some reason, they've been bred to believe that for every problem, there's a government solution. And even if the solution doesn't work, then they'll come up with, with another program and another and another. And how's this going to work out for the future of the country? Well, it's interesting because they... They're not, apparently, no one has told them that the government is not a company. It's not profit motivated. So when there's an innovator out there that's coming up with the next best thing, when there's a Steve Jobs out there that's coming out with the iPhone, they're going, okay, what does the consumer want? What is going to make a profit? And if it doesn't make a profit, how do we make it better and make it more desirable by the consumers out there to make that product better and give our consumers something they've never seen before. And that's how innovation happens. And that's how the next best thing comes out. And that's how you end up with your technology boost and all these things that is not coming from the government. The government is just going, you know, what's the least we can do to get people by? They're not coming up with ideas. They're not giving you the best of the best. They're not a business. You have to have people motivated to do that. If you, in a socialist nation, you are not, there's not that motivation. I mean, are we not seeing the pictures of Venezuela right now? 
they, these people go to their grocery store and there's no groceries. In in America, you go to your grocery store, you see the latest and greatest thing. You know, yeah. there's a huge difference that we're seeing here. It's not being taught. There's a romanticized view of socialism going on when you have the Bernie Sanders out there going, look, we can take care of everyone and you can have everything for free. You can have free education and you can have free health care. And that sounds really good. But when you put it into practice, it is an economic disaster. Yeah. Yeah, well, we know that. I mean, look, uh, it's it's amazing what uh, what has happened here. Yeah, if Venezuela is the perfect example of socialism taken to its its extreme and to its most destructive end result. And to me and to you, Tudor, it's so obvious. Why can't they see it? You go, you. I don't. I. They're not because. The people who want them to see something else are showing them a glamorized view. That's why they can't see it because it's those are not the, the, the images that are being promoted. They don't see that this has gone from a thriving country to human desperation, starvation, and people that are, I mean, the very core of trying to just survive. Can you imagine, can they imagine this country turning into that? There are enough people here, fortunately, that would say, ah, no, we're not doing that. We have to educate our kids when they are in middle and to show them, okay, these are the differences. This is what can happen. This was what will happen and give them a good foundation of history and basic economics so that when they go to college and they have these professors that are saying, oh, let's, we can, this will save the world and this is good for everybody. They can go, oh, wait a minute, you know, this is actually what I know about that. And that's why I'm not going to be pulled into this idea that that's going to save the world because it clearly is not. These are economic systems that are relatable to death, not thriving, not life. Yeah, it's such a good point. So, hey, your age group, obviously the educational system wasn't teaching you what you're now attempting to teach the younger generation. How did you figure this out? Uh, was it family? Was it was it friends? Was it uh, a particular teacher? What was it that led you here? You know, a combination of things. Friends, but I also spent 10 years working in manufacturing. It was really eye-opening because as we're trying to hire people to run machines and put out product, there, there's there was just this change, a sudden change when that generation came in and was like, it was a, a lack of desire for hard work and, and not an understanding of what you're doing is providing. I mean, there's something so exciting to me about manufacturing because if you know what you're doing, you're creating things that change the entire country. Everything you manufacture goes into something that has a huge impact on the entire country. It used to be a source of pride to come to work and know that you were you were contributing in that way. And when I saw this decline in wanting to have jobs like in, in any type of skilled labor and um you know, the desire to even come to work. And then we, and then, so that's when we started to say, okay, we've got to do something. Like people are not realizing their history. They're not understanding what um, America is. We don't, we don't even, if we stop manufacturing altogether, where do we stand? We can't even make our own weapons. What are we going to import weapons during a war? You've got to keep these things. You have to keep companies like this alive. And then we started to see kids that really didn't understand uh, their history or know what, I mean, we started seeing people kicking down monuments. Suddenly people are saying, let's take down the Lincoln Memorial. We, you don't even know what Lincoln did. So then we went to um, D.C. We went to Ford's Theater. And, and as we're mulling over these ideas of how to educate kids, and we, you go through there and you're, you're actually in the place where the president was assassinated. It's so powerful. And we yeah. go down and they have all of, you know, all of the things that they actually have clothing, they have the gun, and a mother is standing there with her 12-year-old son, and they look, everything says assassination, you know, you know why you're there, and she's explaining this is the gun that was used, and he looks at her and he says, well, did he die? <laughs> and at that moment, I oh was like, <laughs> not uh, not every mother can take her son to the Florida theater and go, uh, yes, that's why we're here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Our kids at 12 are not being taught anything about their 
founding fathers, the leaders of this country, men who made huge change. Mm. You know, this is like, if you don't know this, if you don't have this foundation, then what is your motivation to go, this person did this? I can do something better. This country allows me the ability to do this. This man came here. Lincoln came to to D.C. We talk about draining the swamp to literally a swamp. It was yeah. just flooded. There was livestock stock everywhere. This was not glamorous. He was not going to a castle to become the king. He gave up everything to come here to save this country, to abolish slavery, and then he was murdered for it. That is that story is something that kids should go. Men of this country are amazing, and and the men and women in this country can do amazing things, and that's because of the freedoms that we have and the system, the economic system that rules here in the United States, and the importance of being able to fight back when you hear, oh, the United States is the cause of all the world's ills, and and it's a horrible country. No, no, no. Yeah. We have a, a strong rich history that our kids should be able to go back and go, no, I'm proud of being here. And I can do a lot because I live here. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And yet uh, that optimism, that belief uh, was really kind of uh, diminished over time. The confidence that you have in the country and confidence in the ability of the country to solve problems, both at home and abroad, where necessary. Uh, We just don't have that belief in the country anymore. And uh, and it's really kind of sad. Well, and if we raise another generation that continues that way, then there aren't going to be people to come together and build this, continue to build this nation and to continue to do great things and innovate. And there's not going to be entrepreneurs and there's not going to be new things coming out. So, so that's when we said, let's start now. Let's go to middle and high school kids. Let's offer them luminnews.com and they can go there and they can see history. They can see jobs. They can see skills jobs. They can see jobs. You need a college degree. They can make those decisions or at least have a foundation to make those decisions when they're getting out of high school and say, okay, uh, this is this. I want to go to college. I don't want to go to college. Just the, the option of seeing those things. Our schools right now, a lot of times we talk to teachers and they say, well, we're we're being tested on language arts and we're being tested on math. And so we don't have great resources right now for history because, you know, funding comes from these test scores. What can, what can we do? They're, they want this. Our, we thought when we launched LumenNews.com that it would be homeschool groups and private mm-hmm. or Christian schools that would go, no, this is something we want. Our first three classrooms were public schools and the teachers are going, oh my gosh, thank you. We want to teach our kids this kind of stuff. We want this history and these rich stories to share with them. So it's like, this is great. There are, there are, I mean, it's, our teachers want to teach us stuff. They don't have the access to it. We can give them that. Yeah. That's really a great thing. And it's sad to think that it's actually necessary to be doing this when you think about it, you know, it really, really will, uh, you know, it it just seems something so obvious. If, uh, if you grew up uh, in my generation, it was really like, uh, this is automatic here. This is, you should know this. How can you not know it? And yet people don't, it's amazing. Uh, no, it's, it's gone by the wayside. A lot of that, um, a lot of Mm -hmm. that foundation and, so we said so we need to bring it back. Yeah, well, hey, you're doing a great thing. It's really it's really a worthy mission, and you should be uh, extremely proud of what you're doing. People want to find out more, want to get the help, get your word out. How do we do that? Go to Lumen News, L-U-M-E-N, news.com. You can sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a daily email showing you the daily episode. Go there. Check out our Facebook page at Lumen Student News. Check out Lumen Student News. Go to lumennews.com. Everything is right there, ready for you to look at. All right. Hey, and we'll have a link, obviously, to Lumen News on the show notes to this interview. Don't hesitate to email us with your thoughts, your feelings about this subject and any others. Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz, the Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. Tutor, hey, keep up the great work. We're totally behind you, and it's a fight worth having. Thank you. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.